Tonight's graph is on, or tonight's lesson is on interpreting graphs of proportional relationships. Hopefully by the end of tonight's lesson, if you're given a graph of a relationship, you can tell me if it's proportional and what certain points on that graph will mean in terms of the problem. In this first example, we're going to look at the amount of sugar required to make grandma's chocolate chip cookies. Record the coordinates of points from the graph in the table. What do these ordered pairs or values represent? So anytime you see one of the blue squares, I need for you to go ahead and record in the table what those points are, the coordinates of those points, and what they mean in terms of the problem. Take a minute, pause the video, come on back. All right, let's just look at these. This would be 0, 0. This point would be 2, 3. And this point would be 4, 6. And what does it mean in terms of this problem? It means with four cups of sugar, you can make six dozen cookies. And that's what they'll want you to be able to identify. What does the graph actually mean? Well, the first coordinate tells you how many cups of sugar you have. Second coordinate tells you how many dozen cookies you can make. Grandma has one remaining cup of sugar. How many dozen cookies will she be able to make? Plot the point on the graph. So take a minute, pause the video, try it out, come on back. All right, so I'm just going to take one of our points. I'm going to take 4, 6. And I'm going to take my dependent variable, my dozens of cookies, and divide by my independent variable, my cups of sugar. So in this case, I have six dozen cookies can be made with four cups of sugar. However, grandma only has one cup of sugar remaining. How many dozen cookies can she make? So if I look at my denominator, four divided by four is one. 6 divided by 4, use your calculator if you need, 6 divided by 4 is actually 1.5. So that means if you have one cup of sugar remaining, you'll be able to make 1.5 dozen cookies with grandma's recipe. And can we plot that on the graph? Sure we can. Here it is. One cup of sugar remaining, one and a half dozen cookies. How many dozen cookies can grandma make if she has no sugar? Can you graph this on the grid provided? What do we call this point? So take a minute, pause the video, come on back. So of course we can plot the point. First of all, zero cups of sugar means you can make a zero dozen cookies. And that point is the origin. And that's actually going to be on the graph of every proportional relationship. So how many dozen cookies can grandma make if she has no sugar? A zero dozen cookies with no sugar. And the point on the graph will be 0, 0, of course. Okay, the next thing I need for you to do is I need for you to write an equation that would relate the number of dozens of cookies made to the number of cups of sugar grandma has. So take a minute, pause the video, try it out, come on back. First thing I would do is I would let C equal my cups of sugar. And I would let D equal my dozens of cookies. So I'm going to let C be my cups of sugar and D be my dozens of cookies. And again, we know we actually have already identified the unit rate or the constant of proportionality. But if you're saying to yourself, I can't remember from the last slide what that was, I can use a random dozens of cookies and divide by the corresponding cups of sugar to remind you of what that unit rate or constant proportionality was. Let's take 12 dozen cookies and we'll divide out by 8 cups of sugar. 12 divided by 8, use your calculator if you need. 12 divided by 8 is certainly 1.5 and we know that because we figured out that if we had one cup of sugar we could make 1.5 dozen cookies. And that's what that constant of proportionality means, which means we're going to multiply each cups of sugar by one and a half dozen cookies per cup to figure out the total number of dozens of cookies that can be made. So again, cups of sugar I let be C times 1.5. Number of dozens per cup will give you your dozens of cookies. So it's C times our constant of proportionality gives us our dozens of cookies. 
Normally we write our constant first, so I'm going to put 1.5 times C equals D. And again, you can try it out to make sure it works. If I take a look at, let's say, this point here, this point is 8 comma 12. 8 represents my cups of sugar. 12 represents my dozens of cookies. So if I put 8 in place of C, I'm hoping I'm going to get 12 dozen cookies. We can try it out. 1.5 times 8. Use your calculator. 1.5 times 8. You will find out that's definitely 12 dozen cookies. So there's your beautiful equation. This graph shows the amount of time a person can shower with a certain amount of water. Can you determine by looking at the graph whether the length of shower is proportional to the number of gallons of water? Explain how you know. Pause the video, try it out, come on back. Just by looking at this graph, I know this is proportional. Yep. Yes, it's proportional. And the reason I know is because the graph is a straight line through the origin. Straight line through the origin tells you you are guaranteed this is a proportional relationship. How long can a person shower with 15 gallons of water and with 60 gallons of water? So take a minute, pause the video, try it out, come on back. All right, let's take a look. First of all, to figure out for 15 gallons of water, I have to know my scale here. So if all the way over to here is 20, my scale is actually 5, 10, 15, 20. So this point right here is 15 comma 5. That means 15 gallons of water means you can take a five minute shower. So 15 gallons translates into a five minute shower. If you shower for five minutes, you've used 15 gallons of water. Now let's try for 60 gallons. Again, I just go ahead and look at the graph. 60 gallons. How many minutes was that shower? That was a 20 minute shower. And that's how you can use points on the grid to interpret the situation. What are the coordinates of point A? Describe what point A means in the context of this problem. So take a minute, pause the video, come on back. Coordinates of A. Again, I know this goes by 5, so this is 25, this is 30. So that would be 30 comma 10. So the coordinates for point A are 30 comma 10. What does it mean in the context of this problem? It means if you use 30 gallons of water, you've taken a 10 minute shower. So 30 gallons of water translates into having taken a 10 minute shower. And that's what it means in terms of this problem. Find the unit rate or the constant of proportionality for the relationship between the number of gallons used and the length of a shower. Can you use the graph to identify the unit rate? Okay, pause the video, try it out, come on back. All right, to find our unit rate, we could take our dependent variable and just divide by our independent variable. I'll use the point we have right now. 10 minute shower means you've used 30 gallons of water. Unit rate means how many minutes uses one gallon of water. You know, your unit rate or your constant of proportionality means per one. So right here, I have to divide my denominator by 10 which means I did, or I'm sorry, by 30, divide my denominator by 30 to get to 1, which means I have to divide my numerator by 30. 10 divided by 30 on your calculator would be 0.3 repeating, 0.3 repeating minutes per gallon. That also, 0.3 repeating is one third, so that means one third of a minute if you only have one gallon of water. You can take a third of a minute of shower. Could we use the graph to get this? We could. One gallon is probably about right there. And that would translate into one gallon would be one third of a minute shower or 0.3 repeating for your shower. So that's our unit rate or our constant proportionality is one third. 
Write the equation that represents the relationship between the number of gallons used and the length of your shower. So take a minute, pause the video, try it out, come on back. Okay, so if I know my constant of proportionality or my unit rate is one-third or 0.3 repeating, what that means, we've been working on writing equations for a few days now, it means if I take my number of gallons, I can multiply that by 0.3 repeating or one-third to get my number of minutes my shower was. And again, we normally write our constant first, so that's one-third G equals M. Some of you said, but I wrote 0.3 repeating times G equals M, and that's fine as long as you remembered your um, bar above the 0.3 to show that it's repeating. And we can check it out and just be sure it works. This is 60 comma 20. So that means 60 gallons of water translates into a 20 minute shower and we can check that it works. One third times G in this case 60 gives us our number of minutes. We're hoping that translates into 20, 60 over one, straight across the top, straight across the bottom. That gives us 60 over three, 60 divided by three, yay, that's 20 minutes. So that tells us that this equation is absolutely beautiful. Focus question for tomorrow's class. I want you to answer these two questions, bring your answers ready to share tomorrow. Graphs of different proportional relationships have different points but what point must be on every graph of a proportional relationship and why? How can, you find, how can the unit rate be found by investigating the graph of a proportional relationship? So take a minute, try to do a nice write-up on those, bring them to class tomorrow. Have a good night.